I did that yesterday. 
Thank you, Greg. Really appreciate that. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Saturday of the Henley Women's Regatta. We're here on the Henley course, waiting for the first side-by-side -side race to come down, which is due to start at around 10.25. It's the heat of the academic Cox Fours for the Cathy Crookshank Trophy. I've got with me here Greg Davies, headmaster of Shiplake College. Greg, are you looking forward to the racing today? It's going to be a terrific day's racing, and I hope that the weather uh, remains as it is at the moment, because... Uh, it's just, uh, it's a bit overcast uh, down here, a bit grey, but at least it's not uh, raining, Tom. Absolutely, I think we're, we are looking forward to the weather improving as the day goes on, hopefully. Um, I think the forecasts are positive for that, but as we wait on the start, we're looking at the live images here, just, just above Temple Island, of the first heat ready to get underway of the academic Coxed Fours. It's Glasgow University Boat Club on the Berkshire Station and Leeds University on the Buckingham, Buckinghamshire Station. Uh, so we've got two universities, two of the not probably the best known universities on the university rowing circuit, but I'm sure they'll have a good old battle as they go down the course. They're under starters' orders here as we wait for the kickoff. Just a reminder to anyone who's tuning in for the racing today, we've got live coverage of every single race here at the Henley Women's Regatta, courtesy of our fantastic uh, broadcast footage. Broadcast team are working hard to bring you live streaming of all the racing here. So cutting edge technology from the Henley Women's Regatta. And as we watch, they are underway here in the first heat of the academic Cox Fours with Glasgow University on the Burke Station and Leeds University on the Buck Station. And as they move down past Temple Island, I think 10 or 15 strokes into the race, it looks like a clean start from both crews. I think it might be, it's hard to tell here, I think it might be Glasgow who have sneaked out to an early lead here. Glasgow, of course, on the Burke station. We're unsure about the uh, strength of the stream today, but I think it's Glasgow have sneaked out to an early lead as they come down past Temple Island. Uh, we're just waiting for a side-by-side -side shot so we can see what's going on between the two crews. But Greg, how much are you looking forward to this particular race? This is uh, one, one of the great races. It's a tough race, actually, Tom, because there's four... Uh, um, in it plus a cox it depends how heavy your cox is of course but you've got to pull that cox uh, uh, down along with you so it is a tough a tough race and as they're coming they've just gone past the end of the island and it uh, looks to us that glasgow uh, have just taken an edge in the first 150 meters they're rowing i have to say a bit scrappily both uh, teams uh, tom not as neat as, as we perhaps would like them but there's a lot on a lot on for stake in this first round uh, here and it is indeed Glasgow look as though they've got about three quarters of a length uh, over Leeds just at the moment and they've settled down 
And you can see, uh, just as they go past the shot here, the three girl of the Glasgow uh, for really giving it all that she can get. And it's gone up to a, a length ahead now. They look to be, uh, Tom, the much stronger crew, don't they? Absolutely. Impressive stuff there from Glasgow. They look like they consolidated that rhythm as they came down past Temple Island and approaching the barrier, which of course at the Henley Raw Regatta signifies about 600 metres gone. It does look like Glasgow University are in control of this race um, as they row away past our camera station just below Temple Island. So impressive stuff from the Glasgow crew, of course. Um, as the crews come out behind Temple Island, obviously the, the bulk of the, the land provides a bit of cover from the wind, so they've had a bit of a blow there as they came past, but I think Glasgow dealt with it better um, and are looking like the class crew in this heat of the academic Cox Fours. We're just waiting for a, a slightly better view on the racing. Um, as I look across our little uh, portfolio of shots here, I can see that as they come down towards us, it is Glasgow who have definitely consolidated that early lead. I think they've probably moved out to clear water now over Leeds University and I think barring a nautical miracle I think they are going to go on to win this race of course the start at Henley is so important and, and Greg I mean how much experience have you got of knowing at Henley that the start is a crucial factor in the race? Oh it's huge and uh, as you were saying you come past that island and you've been sheltered by the island and as soon as you get past it if there's any wind around you get buffeted and particularly in the smaller boats Tom you're going to get knocked sideways so it's a big steerage uh, issue and, and as you say Glasgow did that very very well and they they have settled well don't you think they're looking a lot smoother than they did in that first 200 meters and they are of course comfortable now because they're looking down at Leeds they know as you say besides some sort of tragedy they're gonna they're gonna win this one and they're as soon as the crew becomes more comfortable yeah absolutely and I think Glasgow are gonna go on to win that so we've switched up uh, to the start of the next race, which is another heat of the intermediate academic Cox Fours between Manchester University on the Burke Station and Exeter University on the Buck Station. Of course, Exeter have had a very good year at university level, student level. Uh, won a couple of medals at Bucks with their senior women's squad, Izzy Lingard and, and Susanna Duncan, two of their star athletes. I don't think they're in this four because I think they're racing at elite level today. But Exeter, a real university boat club to watch out for over the next few years. So it'll be interesting to see if they can transfer that form into a good performance here at the Henley Women's Regatta. But as the crews come down, a bit of interesting steering there from the Manchester uh, crew on the Burke Station. Obviously not a lot of excuse for steering with a cox loaded into the bows of the boat. That's pretty much their sole job. So any steering faults aren't really to be excused here uh, on the Henley course. But obviously just as we wait to see a slightly better shot of the crews as they come down past Temple Island, I think it might be Manchester with a slight advantage, Greg, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think you're right, just a slight advantage there, but both crews rowing very, very uh, neatly and they've just come past the island and they're settling into their rhythm now and Exeter won't want to let uh, Manchester uh, away to, to, uh, at this early stage, will they? They're, they're coming back at them and they're pushing really hard, Exeter, as you can see, to try and stay with Manchester. But for me, it's Manchester that are looking the smoother. The catches are pretty strong there, they're really dumping the, the blade in the water and getting plenty of grip. And they're just not clear water yet, but they're going for it now. They put a bit of a push in there, uh, say Tom, just to try and get uh, clear water. And Exeter looking a little, little laboured um, at the moment. And if they're going to get back with Manchester, they're going to have to do it pretty, pretty much now. Yeah, I think I'd agree with you, uh, Greg. It does look like Manchester are the smoother of the two crews. Both, both boats struggling a little uh, on the course today, but I think it is Manchester who who look to be retaining their form a little better as they come down towards the barrier. So around 600, 700 metres gone of this heat of the academic Cox Fours with Manchester on the Burke Station and Exeter on the Barks, on the Buckingham Station. Uh, I think it will be Manchester as they come down yeah, around 700 metres gone. They'll be looking to push out a little further on the Exeter crew. I think there's a little more power going down in the Manchester crew, certainly. A bit more horsepower on board, which extra are just struggling to cope with at the moment. Um, battle of North and South, certainly, between these two crews. Obviously, Manchester, a um, little trip up the M6, and, and Exeter, a little trip down the south coast of England. So it's um, certainly a battle between North and South. And I think North is winning at the moment, certainly the crew on the Berkshire Station, Manchester University. I think they've stretched out and they've got a bit of clear water here. And they're just looking a bit longer, Tom, aren't they? They're getting a lot more water uh, in the blades. And I think that's one of the reasons that they're beginning to pull ahead. But good on Exeter, they're not letting them go and they're still in touch. So if they're going to do anything, um, Exeter, it's going to have to be now. It's just about open water uh, by a canvas there. 
and Manchester looking really nicely smooth. But again, as soon as they get that open water, you tend to see crews relax. Look at their shoulders because their shoulders just relax and their rowing becomes a lot smoother. And this is what you're seeing uh, now. And of course, look at Exeter, they're looking a bit tighter uh, around the shoulders because they're desperately trying to come back uh, on terms. But it looks to me that Manchester have got this one uh, sewn up. Yeah, I think I'd absolutely agree with you. And I think we'll head back to the start now. Um, I think that's looking like a win for Manchester. So we'll head back to the start for the next heat of the academic Cox Fours between the University of London Boat Club on the Burke Station and Edinburgh University on the Buck Station. Uh, both crews cleanly away. University of London drifting a little bit into the centre. Edinburgh a little more disciplined at hugging their station. So kudos to their Cox. I think the University of London certainly, as we watch them go down in the first 25 strokes, they look to be the stronger of the two crews here. Much more power going down in the water, really sending it at the finish and sitting up nice and tall at the catch, which we like to see uh, in terms of the technical prowess of the boats. I think it is the University of London who stole the early initiative as they row away from the start. Of course, as I said earlier, the start's so crucial uh, to a race on the Henley course because it's a uh, one-on-one -on -one racing, not the typical multi-lane that defines our regatta season. Here in the UK, it is one-on-one -on -one racing, so the mentality of being up in the early stages is absolutely crucial um, to the development of your race. But I think as we move down, around probably 300 to 400 metres gone, I think it is the University of London who have actually established a really impressive early dominance here, Greg. Yeah, and uh, their rate was about two or three uh, pips a bit higher than, than, than Edinburgh at the start there and that's enabled them to get out to a really nice clean start. I think we're going to see a lot more of Edinburgh in, in the few years ahead because there's a lot of investment being put into Edinburgh University rowing at the moment and you know that most of them are, uh, have to train on the canal and it's really really uh, difficult but it's certainly from what we're seeing now it really is the University of London who are, are dominating um, this world. They've already relaxed, taken their rating right down and they're just going to conserve energy now Tom. They're, they know they've got this in the bag and they're just going to, to have a little row and show off actually as they come uh, towards the enclosures now. Uh, Edinburgh looking a little bit more ragged. I think they probably know already that, that, that they'll be going home. Unfortunate, unfortunate as it is for the spectacle of the racing, I think I'm going to have to agree with you here, Greg. It is the University of London. As they did row past us, it, it just looks like the University of London girls in that distinctive purple kit are just bigger, more horsepower on board. And I think that is telling uh, here on the Henley course, of course. As you said, uh, it is University of London who are a bit of a stalwart when it comes to the uh, student rowing scene. And Edinburgh certainly making a name for themselves uh, with their lightweight girls and their lightweight men. Had a really impressive uh, season, number of medals, uh, Maddie Artlet and uh, Robin Hart Winks, uh, of course two under 23 athletes who rode for Edinburgh University. And unfortunately I don't think they're going to be able to uh, get back on this, this margin that the University of London have opened up over Edinburgh University. It's a really good um, showing, isn't it, of, of lovely, lovely rowing. As you were saying, they're sitting up tall, really reaching out for the water, the catches, well, they're, they're not just as strong as they were at the start there because they, look at them, they're so relaxed, they are conserving energy for the next uh, two, two or three, um, two, two or three uh, rounds and looking very, very smooth as, as they go down there. What do you reckon of the next race, uh, Tom? It's uh, Yui from Bristol University of West England uh, against Worcester. Uh, they're now on the start. The butterflies will be going uh, for them. Yeah, absolutely. It is uh, our last of the four heats of the academic Coxed Fours for the Cathy Cruikshank Trophy here at the Henley Women's Regatta on the Saturday. And they've just left the start, uh, as you say, between Yui, the University of the West of England on the Burke Station and Worcester Uni on the Buckinghamshire station. So probably a slightly closer race on paper here between these two crews. But it does seem to be that the faster crews are on the Berkshire station this morning, whether that's to do with seeding from the time trial, um, we're not quite sure, but I would say it probably is. Um, as the crews come down, it is Yui, I think who have stolen the early initiative, maybe or perhaps my eyesight's not as good as my optician says it is. I think it might actually be Worcester who have got an early advantage here uh, in this heat of the academic Cox Falls. Of course, the progression from this is as you've seen we've had four heats of this so four crews will progress to the semi-finals which will be raced tomorrow morning uh, and then we'll have a final 
uh, between the two crews who win those respective semis later this evening, so uh, later Sunday evening. So we've got a nice, easy progression system, uh, nothing too complicated. And as we look at the beautiful shots here of the Temple Island uh, overshadowing the crews, I think it is Worcester. So our first Bucks crew of the day, I think it is Worcester who have probably around a length, maybe half a length. Perhaps I'm overshooting it as they come down about 300 meters gone. I think it is Worcester. What do you think, Greg? Yeah, I think it is too. And they were so aggressive, weren't they, Tom, off the start? Uh, so it's not really a surprise that they've really taken this race by the bootstraps. And their rating is still quite, uh, quite high as they've come past the island now. But they were really aggress aggressive off the start, and that's meant. And actually good steering too uh, by the Cox, I thought. Really good steering, uh, giving them a bit of uh, as much shelter as they possibly could. But let's have a look here because Yui have come right back at them, it seems to me, and it's still only half a length. And it's Yui who are really stretching to get as much water underneath the blades as they possibly can. And as they've both settled now, it's Yui who are looking actually quite strong and they're coming back at Worcester. So this could be the first race, proper race, Tom, that we've had uh, this morning. Well, we hope so, Greg. It certainly looks like it's developing into a, what is traditionally known as a humdinger of a race here. I think Worcester, as they said, stole the early, adva early advantage, but I wouldn't rule the University of the West of England Yui out just yet. It does look like they are clawing back that deficit. And if they can mount a bit of a charge there on the Berkshire station, then we should be in for a cracking finish as they come down past the uh, assembled crowds here at the Henley Women's Regatta. Um, fantastic support here for all the crews. And if you are in and around the area, Henley, Maidenhead, anywhere around there, and you had a loose end today, come down and watch some of the best racing on offer in the UK. Really fantastic quality of racing across the uh, across the board here at the Henley Women's Regatta. So please come down and support some of the crews who have been working towards this regatta all year. But as they come into shot here, uh, just coming past the enclosure, it does look like maybe Yui have back on terms mm. with Worcester. We could be in for a fantastic finish here, Greg. Yeah, Yui have put a real push in now, haven't they? You can see that they've upped their rate and they're really digging it in now to try and get back on, on touch with, with Worcester. So this is a terrific race. There's lots of effort being put in. Worcester just missing a couple of strokes there, and that's allowing Yui to get back into them. And Yui really feel that they can come back on this, I think, Tom. And they're pushing hard now, aren't they? Look at the way that they are driving the legs down as they go past 40 court. What a tremendous backdrop that is. Oh, brilliant racing. Absolutely brilliant racing here. This is our first real proper race here. The last heat of the academic coxed fours and it is Yui I think who had the slight advantage as they came past our dead level shot and they're just rowing past our commentary booth here and we can just about see the girls from Yui in that red kit I think they've got around a third of a length perhaps maybe half length stretching out so a fantastic middle section of the race here from those girls and as they head down towards uh, the last sort of 500 meters um, of this heat I think it's going to be momentum is everything in sport I was talking to Martin Unsworth yesterday and we were watching the rugby Slightly unrelated, but I was saying to him, England and Saxons beat the South African crew, and it, momentum is absolutely everything in sport. And I think through the middle, middle portion, Yui have really picked this up. Yeah, they have. Their boat speed is really good now, uh, Tom, you're quite right. And just every now and then, Worcester are just missing a stroke, and that's not helping at all. But I tell you what, they haven't given up. They're really pushing, pushing, pushing hard now. This is a terrific race. It's really difficult to see. I think Worcester have come back at them, uh, uh, Tom and it, it's almost dead level. This is just terrific racing. If you're down up by Upper Thames and you're not uh, with either of these two crews, pick one now and give them a shout, please, because this is just terrific. Uh, Worcester really, really pushing hard just to keep that canvas lead. And Yui uh, really hoped, I think, in that mid part of the race, uh, Tom, that they were going to take uh, Worcester and put a bit of a lead on them, but Worcester wouldn't let them. And both crews now are really digging it in. This is where the lactic acid is, is going to be creeping into the legs. And this is really where the fitness is going to come. Absolutely, you're completely right. I think this, is, this last portion of the race is all about technique, all about how much winter training you've done on the ergos and in the weights room. And I think perhaps on this occasion it's Worcester who have maybe done that extra mileage on the ergo because they look like yeah, they you. have taken the lead back again. So we've had another lead change in this heat of the academic Cox Falls. Really impressive stuff from both of these crews. But as they approach our finish camera here, the sixth camera stationed along the Henley Women's Regatta course, I think it is Worcester, yeah, who have rode back through. So brilliant mentality from those girls. You can't underestimate how difficult it is to uh, be rowed through and then row back through the crew. And as they cross the line, 
it is Worcester University who took the win there in the academic Coxed Fours heat. So now we'll head back to the